All right, so you've got a basic understanding of virtual machines. Let's jump straight into a demo now and deploy an Azure VM from the Azure portal itself. All right, so we're over here in the portal. We've already logged into Azure, and if you haven't already, go ahead and go over to the resource group section by clicking resource groups on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side now, we want to create a resource group to store our virtual machine in. So go ahead and click add on the top. Once the blade pops up, enter the name of the resource group you want to create. So I'm going to use SL-70533. Dash VMs, and we're doing that here just so we put all the VMs for the demos in. When we want to delete everything we've created, we can simply delete the resource group and everything inside of it will be deleted as well. Resource groups also, as you'll see in role-based access controls later on, are an area where we can scope permissions to particular resources. But otherwise, just think of them as a container to put everything in. You also need to select the subscription that that's going to go in. I'm going to use my pay-as-you-go subscription here and a resource group location. So in this case, I'm using North Central US. Now, that doesn't mean I'm restricted to creating resources in that region. This is just where the metadata for the resource group is actually stored. Inside of the resource group, I can still create VMs and other services in multiple locations. There's no problem there. But go ahead and click Create, and it'll take probably a minute for just for that to pop up. Maybe not even that. In fact, yep, it's already created. Click Refresh, and we should see our resource group available to us there. Now, a couple ways I can go ahead and provision our new virtual machine. I can go into the resource group by clicking on it here, and on the right-hand side, there's a, there's a button that says Add. We can go ahead and click that. Or on the left-hand side, I can go ahead and click New and then choose the type of service I want. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to use Windows Server 2016, so we'll click that one there. And it takes me straight to the blades for creating our virtual machine. So now we have to enter a, a number of uh, various items for the parameters. So SL-VM01 is what I'm going to use for my name. I'm going to use an SSD disk here. If you click the drop down, you'll see that we have the choice of SSD or HDD. SSD obviously much quicker and you'll learn more about the different disk types a little bit later on in the course. Uh, username, so put in an admin username for yourself here and put in a password. And I do encourage you to try to pick something that you know no one's easily going to guess. If you decide to ever put this on the internet, as you'll see in a minute, you know, you can, you can RDP into these servers remotely. You do want to make sure that you've got a strong password because you are publicly exposing the server to the internet. Uh, then we have our resource group, so I can choose Use Existing Now. I could have created a new one at the same time, but I'm going to use my existing resource group, so SL-7533-VMs. Uh, my location, I'm going to put this VM in the same location, so North Central US. Uh, and then the next thing you finally ask with is, do you already have Windows Server licenses, perhaps in your enterprise that you want to bring across, and you can save money with the hybrid benefit program that Microsoft has. Go ahead and click OK there. Takes us on to the next blade, and you'll notice that depending on the disk type you've chosen, you're now presented with appropriate instances that can support that disk type. So if we wanted to see some of the more basic A-series instances, we would have to change the disk type to HDD. Now that we're there, you'll see a few recommended instance sizes pop up straight away, but go ahead and click View All. This will take just a second, and then you'll see a lot more instances exposed to you. So if we scroll down, we're going to actually look for one of the B-series instances, which are much cheaper for us to use. And you can see here that we've got like B1MS, B2S. Again, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but like the B2S with the S in its name, that's how we know it supports premium storage, which we're going to want to use on this case. So we'll go ahead and click the B2S, and then go to the bottom and click Select. And that will now take us onto the next blade. We have to configure some optional features. Okay, so here we are on the third blade. And what you'll notice, first of all, is our choice around availability sets. We can essentially create an availability set and put a couple of VMs in there, and Azure will separate them out from a fault domain and update domain perspective, which you'll find out a little bit later on in the course. We're not going to go into that too much at this point. Next, you have your storage options. So if we choose No to manage disks, it'll ask us if we want to create a storage account. If we choose Yes, Azure is essentially going to manage the disks and the appropriate storage accounts for us. Again, you'll find out more about that a little bit later on. Next, we have Networks, Subnets, Public IP Address, and Network Security Group. In this case, we're just going to accept the defaults for them. So it's going to create a new network, a new subnet. It's going to give us a public IP address. So we are going to be putting this VM 
on a public IP that's exposed to the internet that will allow us to connect to it very easily. You know, there's alternative ways if we were connecting this on-prem or VPN and in, et cetera. But for the purposes of this demo, we're going to use a public IP. And that's also why I recommended making sure you do use a good password because you are putting a, a VM on a public IP. Uh, scrolling further down, we have options around extensions. We're not going to use any extensions at this point. Then we get to a really cool feature though, which I like, which is enable auto shutdown. Uh, and this configures your virtual machine to shut down daily automatically at the time specified. So turn this on just in case you do leave the virtual machine and forget to delete it. You won't incur any compute charges. You'll still pay for the storage, but you won't be paying for that CPU and memory charges that Azure would, would charge you for. Uh, choose a shutdown time. I'll just leave the default at 7 p.m. here and select no for notification before shutdown. Scrolling down a little further, we have some sections around monitoring. Again, we'll cover some more of this a little bit later on, but you can choose to enable boot di diagnostics, which we're going to say yes to at the moment, guest OS diagnostics, choose that as disabled for right now, and a diagnostic storage account is created for you automatically. And finally, one thing Azure's recently started doing is integrating backup into the creation of the VM in the portal. So you can choose to enable that or disable that. Again, we're not gonna cover Azure backup right now, but it's good to know that the option is there. Once you've filled in that information, go ahead and click OK. And what you'll see is a validation completed from Azure. It'll give you a whole bunch of information, show you the cost per hour of the virtual machine, and you can scroll through this and just see a summary of all the settings you've basically chosen to, to go ahead with. Next thing you can do is you can also download the templates. You'll learn more about ARM templates later on, but you can at this point click this link on the bottom to download template and parameters. Uh, if you're not gonna do anything with that now as we're not in this demonstration, go ahead and just click create and it's now going to begin deploying your Azure virtual machine and we'll give this probably a minute or so here and come back to it and it should be completed. As you can see, I've fast forwarded a little bit here and we're back in Azure in our virtual machine section. To get here, simply select virtual machines from the left hand side and then you'll see all of the virtual machines that you have. As you can see, we've got SL-VM01 there. The alternative is you can go back into your resource group. We select resource groups here. Select SL-7533VMs in my case. And what we'll see there are all the resources in the resource group. So we've got the virtual machine, but we've also got the associated resources it creates as well, like the storage account, the virtual network, the VM as I mentioned, and then the disks and network interfaces created as well. And with that, our VM is created, and that's the end of this demonstration.